welcome again to Travel Oz. I'm Greg Granger. This week we're heading off the coast of Queensland to the Great Barrier Reef and a mass invasion of manta rays. These ballerinas of the deep have swum to the reef's southernmost coral cay, Lady Elliot Island. There's so many of them, divers have been photographing and identifying each of them to try to make sense of this phenomenon. We're also returning to Arnhem Land in the top end for the Aboriginal community's biggest music festival. And we'll explore coastal Queensland by train. From the crocodile infested waters of the Daintree to the koala friendly outskirts of Brisbane. we have here off Lady Elliot Island, a mass influx of manta rays. Up to 110 have been sighted over these last three months, 20 at a time. And we know they're different because photographs are being taken, their body markings are being compared. Let's go and see for ourselves. Lady Elliot Island is a scuba diver's paradise with its stunning coral and amazing marine life. Fishing is banned around Lady Elliot, meaning there's an abundance of fish. It's also the breeding ground for the humpback whale. A mother basks at the surface as her newborn calf floats above. A birth that has culminated after a mass migration of almost 8,000 humpbacks every year from the Antarctic. The other marine marvel I'm looking out for today is the manta ray. Dive master Mark Atkinson is studying their mass migration. Oh, at our starboard side here, we've got uh, a group of manta rays feeding on the surface. Looks to be about four or five just in this little pod. Uh, and there'll be a few more just up here. So we'll notice them doing little circles around, trying to filter in as much plankton as they can possibly get. Well, they just feed on the surface. And around Lady Elliot Island on the southern end here, the current tends to form a funnel shape. So that funnel shape is bringing all the plankton into one area which makes it a little bit easier for the uh, manta rays to feed. Uh, probably the most we've sighted is about 20 mantas in one, one go. Uh, the mantas seem to have gathered in the last two months in large numbers around Lady Elliot, and the numbers have just been phenomenal this year. Uh, why that is, we're not sure. We're trying to uh, identify as many as possible so that we can work out how many are residents and how many are transit. They're very, very graceful in the water and they've got a little bit of a temperament, you know, if they're not happy with you being around or they want a little bit more time to get used to you being uh, in, their, in their cleaning area, uh, they'll tend to roll up their cephalic flap and, and uh, swim away a little bit. So this is the camera we're using while we're snorkeling and diving. What we're trying to do is generally get right underneath them and to get a belly shot uh, and a nice clear shot of the belly so that we can identify them. Uh, it can be difficult at times, you know, when you're in the water, they uh, tend to scoot past pretty fast sometimes. Uh, it's nice and easy when they're cleaning on the bombies, uh, or if they are, you know, feeding at the surface and not moving too far in the current, you can get under them relatively easy. Eventually what they're going to try and do is they're going to try and make a worldwide uh, sort of database with the mantas so that you can send your photos in, they can ID them, and then they can actually tell you where the mantas are around the world when they turn up. We've got a large database of other photos um, that we've collected and every time we take more shots of the, uh, the mantas we're adding them to that file and then we're just collecting that uh, information as to where we see them, what we've seen, the behaviour and those sorts of things. Mark and his team have collected more than 120 photographs of different mantas with the collection growing every day. Well, we've sighted well over, I believe, to be uh, five, six hundred, maybe even more, up to a thousand mantas. We have pretty much two different types of mantas that uh, we're identifying at the moment. The underside of some of them are white and the underside of some of them are actually uh, very black. So on the photos behind me here, they all have uh, little birthmark 
looking spots and those little spots there are the uh, spots that we're trying to you know, identify them off. They are very much like fingerprints, so each man has a different fingerprint. Uh, we have found a few that have very little markings underneath them, but every manta has a dot or two that we can identify them off. Well, we're trying to identify as many as possible. First, to, to identify which ones are local, which, one, which ones are transitory, and then we'd really like to get into the process of finding out where they go. What do they do after they leave Lady Elliot Island for their little uh, winter vacation? Where do they go? Um, no one really knows how far they travel, so uh, that's the next step, is to be able to try and tag them and then get an idea of where these uh, mantas are actually travelling to. The Great Barrier Reef is one of the world's most important habitats for turtles, with Lady Elliot Island a key breeding and nesting site. Swim the coral reef surrounding Lady Elliot and you're almost certain to encounter a green sea turtle. Attempts to mate are also frequent, with many females swimming right to the surface in a bid to fend off amorous advances. The females will mate every two to four years, often swimming long distances to do so. Once they have been fertilised, the females will usually come ashore after dark and on the right tide. She's in for a long haul up the beach of her choice, dragging herself well away from the sea for the egg-laying ritual. Once she finds sand she deems suitable, she'll use all four flippers to dig a hole deep enough to protect the hatchlings. It's a slow and cumbersome process, with an hour or more elapsing before the turtle starts to lay her eggs. And what a remarkable process this is. For the next one to two hours, she'll drop between 80 and 120 eggs. And it's all on the same beach she herself was born some 20 to 50 years ago. Over the summer months, she'll repeat this laying process up to nine times. Once she's dropped these eggs, she'll cover them with her protective layer of sand before she heads back out to sea. Within two months, the hatchlings have grown enough to break out of their shell, dig through the sand above and head for the sea. Ahead, a life of threats and challenges, with only one in a thousand of these hatchlings growing to become adults.